console. In the upper left-hand portion of your view, you would see the uh, instruments that have to do with the cryogenics that are used to power the fuel cells and provide breathing oxygen to the spacecraft. Originally, Apollo 8 was to be a second Earth orbit test using a new Saturn series rocket, the 36-story tall Saturn V. Its three stages had almost five and a half times the thrust of Apollo 7's rocket, and the liftoff subjected the astronauts to increased stress and vibration. You have these giant engines down there gimbling, a million and a half pounds of thrust, flicking themselves back and forth like a sort of a garden hose you're riding up uh, into space. Uh, we're at the end of a 360-foot uh, vehicle. Think of it not as a big, rigid hunk like the Washington Monument, but more like a whip antenna on an automobile. So at the top, we were really being thrown around. And uh, basically, during the first 10 or 15 seconds, uh, we could not speak to each other, and we couldn't hit a switch on the instrument panel if we had to because of the motion. Given the success of the previous flight, and the fact that U.S. military intelligence had heard rumors that the Russians were ready to go to the moon, NASA decided to proceed with a lunar orbit. Apollo 8 journeyed to within 60 miles of the moon's surface and circled it 10 times. Anders, Jim Lovell, and mission commander Frank Borman became the first humans to see the moon firsthand and to view the entire Earth from space. Although the Soviets had fired several unmanned probes at the moon, and had even landed one on the surface, they were nowhere near sending human beings. Apollo 8 entered orbit three days out on Christmas Eve, 1968. That night, as a greeting to Earth from more than 220,000 miles away, the crew took turns reading the creation story from the book of Genesis. First Anders, then Lovell, then Borman. A billion people in 64 countries tuned in radios and television sets. We were told about six weeks before the flight that we would have a television performance on Christmas Eve which would have the largest audience that had ever listened to a human voice and the only instructions that our government gave us at this time was to do something appropriate and frankly uh, it was an annoyance to me I don't know how it was to Bill but we weren't really excited about uh, doing something appropriate we, we asked uh, some friends what they might suggest and a friend of ours named Cy Borgen who was uh, a very gifted uh, individuals lives in Washington came back with a suggestion that, that it might be appropriate if we felt like it to read from Genesis and that's how it all happened uh, it was wasn't pre-planned it was I mean it was pre-planned from about three weeks before the flight but I didn't give 30 seconds thought to it it just turned out that Cy Borgen was a much more sensitive uh, intellectual than I thought he was and it, it, I think it struck the, the tone for the whole mission in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the darkness he called night, and the evening and the morning were the first day. And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters called he seas. God saw that it was good. And from the crew of Apollo 8, with good night, good luck, a Merry Christmas, and God bless all of you, all of you on the good earth. For the return trip, Apollo 8 had to establish a critical burn on the far side of the moon, out of radio contact. At 19 minutes after midnight on Christmas Day, Jim Lovell re-established communications with Mission Control in Houston, Texas. Please be informed there is a Santa Claus, Lovell reported. Apollo 8 began a safe and successful voyage home. Apollo 8 was what the spirit of Apollo was all about. Apollo program primarily was intended to demonstrate that uh, man could leave the planet Earth 
and Apollo 8 was the first craft to do that in all history. And uh, the job that uh, Jim and his colleagues, Frank Warman and Bill Anders, did on that flight was, I think, one of the major high points of all the history of flight. At first glance, Apollo 9 may have seemed a regression, returning to an Earth orbit mission after an impressive flight.